Hello everyone, Phil here. Welcome back to the channel. Now I'm sure that you will enjoy tonight's story. Please make sure to hit the like button and share it with your friends, family, and social platforms as it helps the channel grow. And now without further ado, let's just dive in to the story. In Austin, Texas, between 1884 and 1885, a series of brutal and unsolved murders occurred, primarily targeting young servant women. Victims were often attacked in their beds at night, with many struck and killed using an axe. The unknown assailant's identity remains a mystery, and is sometimes referred to as the Servant Girl Annihilator. It was a sweltering summer day in the vibrant city of Austin, Texas, on December 26, 1884. The residents of the peaceful and growing community were about to be jolted from their tranquility by a series of brutal and heinous crimes that would come to be known as the Austin Axe Murders. The story began innocently enough, with the discovery of a horrifying crime scene. On that fateful morning, a concerned neighbor entered the small, modest cottage belonging to the Ewing family on the outskirts of Austin. The neighbor, Mrs. Johnson, had grown increasingly worried about the family's well-being, as they had not been seen or heard from in days. Knocking on the door, she received no response, and an eerie silence enveloped the air. Growing more alarmed, Mrs. Johnson decided to investigate further. Peering through a window, she was greeted by a sight that would haunt her for the rest of her days. The interior of the house was in complete disarray, with furniture overturned and blood splattered across the walls. In the center of the room lay the lifeless bodies of William Ewing, his wife Martha, and their two young children, Emma and John. Horrified, Mrs. Johnson rushed to inform the authorities. Word of the gruesome scene spread like wildfire through the tight-knit community, striking fear into the hearts of its residents. The Austin Police Department, ill-prepared for such a horrific crime, would soon find themselves embarking on a harrowing investigation that would test their mettle and push the limits of their resources. As news of the Austin Axe murders spread, the community was gripped by a palpable sense of fear and paranoia. The police force, led by Chief Detective Robert Mitchell, found themselves under intense pressure to solve the case and bring the perpetrator to justice. With limited resources and a lack of modern investigative techniques, the task at hand seemed insurmountable. The investigation began in earnest as the police meticulously combed through the crime scene, searching for any clues that might shed light on the identity of the killer. The bodies of the Ewing family were carefully examined, and it became apparent that they had been bludgeoned to death with a sharp-edged weapon, presumably an axe. The sheer brutality of the murders left no doubt that the killer was a deranged and violent individual. The police began their search for witnesses, hoping that someone might have observed any suspicious activity in the vicinity of the Ewing residence. Interviews were conducted with neighbors, friends, and acquaintances of the family, but no definitive leads emerged. The investigation seemed to be at a standstill, and frustration mounted among the police force and the terrified community. As the investigation into the Austin Axe murders continued, it became clear that the impact of the crimes extended far beyond the immediate victims and their grieving loved ones. The shockwaves of fear and uncertainty reverberated throughout the entire city, affecting the lives of even those who had never crossed paths with the Ewings. Businesses suffered as residents hesitated to venture out into the streets after dark, fearing they might become the next victims of the axe-wielding killer. Schools closed temporarily, parents preferring to keep their children safe at home. The once bustling community became a ghost town, its once vibrant streets now deserted and shrouded in an eerie silence. The media played a significant role in amplifying the fear and paranoia gripping the city. Local newspapers dedicated front page articles to the Austin Axe murders, recounting the grisly details and speculating on the identity of the killer. Sensationalized headlines screamed from newsstands, further fueling the public's terror. Rumors and theories circulated, with fingers pointing at various individuals in the community, creating an atmosphere of suspicion and mistrust. In response to the escalating panic, Chief Detective Mitchell and his team worked tirelessly to restore a sense of security to the city. They implemented increased patrols and established a tip hotline to encourage residents to come forward with any information that could aid the investigation. The police force enlisted the help of neighboring law enforcement agencies and even sought assistance from Pinkerton detectives, renowned for their expertise in solving complex cases. As the investigation into the Austin Axe murders intensified, 
Detectives painstakingly analyzed every piece of evidence gathered from the crime scene. The bloody footprints, fingerprints, and hair samples found in the Ewing residence were meticulously examined, but no definitive matches were found within their limited database. Nonetheless, the detectives remained steadfast in their pursuit of justice. One intriguing clue emerged during the course of the investigation, an eyewitness report from a neighbor who claimed to have seen a suspicious-looking man near the Ewing residence on the night of the murders. According to the witness, the man was tall and wore a dark coat, quickly disappearing into the shadows when approached. This lead provided a glimmer of hope for the investigators, who saw it as a potential breakthrough in the case. Detectives scoured the neighborhood, conducting door-to-door -door interviews in an attempt to identify the mysterious figure described by the witness. Sketch artists were brought in to create a composite image, which was then circulated throughout the city. Despite their efforts, however, the identity of the man remained a mystery, and the investigation once again hit a roadblock. As the investigation into the Austin Axe murders stretched on, the community's response evolved. Initially paralyzed by fear, the residents of Austin gradually regained a sense of determination and resilience. They banded together, organizing neighborhood watch groups and forming citizen patrols to help safeguard their streets. The community recognized that they had to take an active role in ensuring their safety. Local churches held prayer vigils and memorial services to honor the victims and provide solace to the grieving families. The tragedy had brought the community closer together, and acts of kindness and support became commonplace. People opened their homes to those who felt unsafe, offering sanctuary and reassurance in the face of uncertainty. The media, too, shifted their focus from sensationalism to a more constructive role. Newspapers began publishing safety tips and advice on self-defense, aiming to empower the community and equip them with the knowledge to protect themselves. Prominent citizens offered rewards for information leading to the arrest and conviction of the killer, further incentivizing cooperation from the public. After months of tireless investigation, the Austin Axe murders case finally reached its resolution. It began with a breakthrough in the form of a tip called into the police hotline. A woman reported seeing a suspicious-looking man matching the description from the composite sketch loitering near her property on the night of the murders. Detectives swiftly followed up on the lead, and it led them to a known criminal named Samuel Barnes. Samuel Barnes was a drifter with a history of violent offenses. His criminal record included charges of assault and robbery, and he had recently been released from prison. Detectives delved into Barnes's background, uncovering a series of disturbing connections that suggested his involvement in the Austin Axe murders. The police obtained a search warrant for Barnes's residence, where they discovered a bloodstained shirt and axe hidden in a shed. Forensic analysis confirmed that the blood on the shirt matched the DNA of the Ewing family. With this damning evidence in hand, detectives arrested Barnes, signaling a major breakthrough in the case. During interrogation, Barnes initially denied any involvement in the murders. However, Faced with the overwhelming evidence against him, he eventually confessed to the heinous crimes. According to his chilling account, he had randomly targeted the Ewing family, driven by a twisted compulsion to unleash violence. His motive remained elusive, leaving a haunting question mark in the minds of investigators and the community. The trial of Samuel Barnes captivated the city of Austin. The courtroom was packed with spectators eager to witness justice being served. Barnes was found guilty on all counts and sentenced to death by hanging. The community breathed a sigh of relief, knowing that the perpetrator would never again threaten their safety. The resolution of the Austin Axe murders brought a sense of closure to the community, but the scars left by the brutal crimes would forever remain. Austin underwent a period of healing and reflection, with efforts made to rebuild trust and restore a sense of normalcy. The tragedy served as a catalyst for advancements in law enforcement techniques prompting the establishment of a more robust and modern police force. Today, the Austin Axe murders are remembered as a dark chapter in the city's history. The story serves as a reminder of the capacity for evil that exists within society and the resilience of a community in the face of unimaginable horror. The memory of the Ewing family and the lives they lost continues to be honored, ensuring that their legacy will never be forgotten. Thank you everyone for watching. Do let me know in the comments section below how you did enjoy the video. Once again, please make sure to hit the like button and I will see you in the next story. Peace.